In this video, we're going to go over the day two of the 2.6 notes. Now, I'm doing day two because I'm going to skip the day one. We're not going to do the uh, inventory control problems. So we are starting our notes on uh, page 28. And there's two problems I'm going to go through, and then I'm going to have you work on other problems. So we have to start thinking outside the box with these problems. So it's the same situation we've had in 2.5. We're trying to optimize things, but we have uh, different scenarios that we're going to work in. So this first one, let me just if I can get this a little bit bigger. We have a situation where a rancher has 204 meters of fencing from which to build two corrals. So one corral is square, so that's the H by H, and the other as rectangular with length that is twice the width. Find the dimensions that result in the greatest combined area. Okay, so that's your tip off. Greatest combined area is what we want to do. So our objective function is that our area is going to equal, let's see, the area of the rectangle is 2x times x, so that is 2x squared, and the area of the square is h squared. Okay, so that's our objective. What's our constraint? So our constraint is that we only have 204 meters of fencing. So fencing is around the perimeter. So that 200, excuse me, 204 is going to be equal to, okay, 2x plus x plus 2x plus x. So that's going to be 6x. And then I have 4 h's. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my constraint, just like you always do, and I'm going to get rid of my h, so I'm going to write my h in terms of x. So it's going to be that uh, 204 minus 6h divided by 4 equals h. Okay, so I can make that a little simpler. So h equals 51 minus 3 halves times x. Okay, so that's my h substitution. So my area now equals 2x squared plus 51 minus 3 halves x, the quantity squared. Okay, take your derivative. So my derivative is going to be a prime equals 4x and then plus, do the power rule, 2 times 51 minus 3 halves x to the first, don't forget the chain rule, times negative 3 halves. Okay, clean this up. A prime equals, and that's going to be 4x, and then these twos, let me just change color for clarification. Okay, so this 2 and this 2 can cancel. So then what you're really doing is you are saying negative 3 times 51, which is negative 153. And then you're saying negative 3 times negative 3 halves x, which is going to be positive 9 halves x. Okay, so 4x and 9 halves x can combine to be 8 Point five x minus 153. Okay, that equals 0 to get my CV. My CV ends up being 18. Now, 18 is, I'm going to say this is x. So you can figure out all your dimensions. However, I would always recommend that you take the second derivative because that's the easiest way to evaluate your function. The second derivative is everywhere positive. If the second derivative is everywhere positive, look what happened. I have minimized my solution. What did I want to do? I wanted to maximize it. 
So when I optimized this, I did not get what I thought I was going to get. So I have to still come up with an answer. But the answer is that uh, this rancher cannot maximize the area if he's going to force himself to build two separate pens. So let's think about this situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph this and then see what is going on. So if I were to graph my function, so this is my function, what I'm finding is the following. When the x is 18, so let's say that's right here, my, my area is at a minimum. Okay, so I'm not going to say what that is right this minute. I can figure that out. But the most important part is to recognize that it is at a minimum. So then the question is, what if, okay, if this is x and this is my area, what if I don't build any of the x type uh, rectangle? What if I put all my material into h? So if I do that, what does that mean? So that means, so I'm going to start two little things here. What if, if x equals 0? Then what I know is that 4 times h is going to be 204. So therefore, h is going to be 51. And if h is 51, then h squared equals 51 squared, which is 2601. So that means right here, whoops, sorry, right here, I have the point 0, 0,2601, with that being my area squared. Okay, so that's one scenario. That's one endpoint scenario. And what does that mean? That means take all your material and put it into the square corral. So this is for the square corral. Okay, let's run through the other scenario. What if your h is 0? So if h equals 0, then I have 6x is going to be 204. So therefore, x will be 34. So my rectangle will be 34 times double that, 68. And so my area will be, so the area is going to be 2,312 feet squared. So that's the other extreme answer. So these are endpoint solutions. So that means if I have 34 being my um, x, then I'm at this point up here, and at that point, this is not cooperating with me, at that point, I have 34 for my x, and what is my area? My area was 232312 two, feet squared. Okay, so what should I do? Should I build the rectangle using all the supplies to make a rectangle? Or should I use all the supplies to make a square if my goal is to have the greatest area? And the answer is, I'm going to build the square. So, if nothing else, this should give you a good reason why you always want to think about testing your answer to see whether you are really getting what you think you're getting. In this situation, even though I didn't do a formalized test, I certainly could have because I've, I've, I have the data. So for my second derivative, what I found was right there, testing it at the um, critical value of 8.4, that gives me a min. And the min is not what I needed. I needed a max. So using the two shapes 
is not good for getting your greatest area. Okay, so you want to think about this. See if you could have come up with this solution yourself now that you see it all played out in front of you. Okay, there's one more problem that I wanted to do, and that's this one. And this should make you think, okay, I've got to really kind of stretch a little bit. It's not all going to be about a rectangular area. There's going to be more interesting problems out there, and you have the ability to do them at this point. Okay, so this is a volume problem. An open rectangular box is to be constructed by cutting square corners out of a 16 by 16 inch piece of cardboard and folding up the flaps. Find the value of x for which the volume of the box will be as large as possible. Okay, volume as large as possible. So what does volume of this box equal? The volume equals length times width times height, w squared h. That is your objective function right there. What is your constraint? Your constraint is that you're using this paper that is 16 by 16. So what does um, that mean? Well, let's see. Look at the 16 and look at the W. The W is the width. So it looks like I can build a constraint with this. Isn't it true that if you look at the W and the 16, can't you say that the W has to equal 16 minus 2x? So at this point, your constraint, so what word did I write there? I think I wrote construct. Okay, so your constraint has another purpose. Its purpose is to relate the W and the X. And we can see that we are getting our W, okay, our W right here, by cutting out these X boxes. If you cut out the X boxes, what's going to happen is that you will have w equal to 16 minus 2x. Okay, so now I'm ready to start getting going here. So I know that I want to have my volume maximized, right? I want to max this, and I'm definitely going to check it to make sure that I max it. So my volume is going to equal um, length times width times height. I've already said w squared times h. So over here, I'm going up here, I'm going to figure out what H is. So it looks like um, my, and I shouldn't have it, H, so hang on, because I'm complicating things unnecessarily. It is height, but the height here is measured as X. So then I'm going to take this out and be consistent and make that X as well. So sorry if, that, if I threw you off for a little bit. Okay, so why don't I figure out what X is? So let's let's do that. Or I can figure out, yeah, I'm going to figure out what W is. So let's see what I want to do. Um, if I say, okay, that's what W is. Yeah, why don't I just go ahead and do it? It's all set up for me. Let's just use it the way it is. Let's not manipulate things. So volume equals 16 minus 2X, and I'm going to square that, because that's what I did to the W, times the X. Okay, so I'm going to use um, my product rule and my chain rule with the power rule. Okay, so V prime equals left, D right, which is 1, plus right, D left, which is bring the 2 down, 16 minus 2x to the first, and then do the chain rule times a negative 2. Okay, V prime equals, I'm going to leave this be, 16 minus 2X squared plus, let's clean this up. So this is going to not stay a plus, most likely, because I have a negative 2 times a 2X. So this is going to be minus 2X times 16 minus 2X. Okay, now remember, 
I want to be able to set my V prime equal to zero. Since I have a cube uh, squared here, so it's a, it's a quadratic, I want to get this into factors. So look what I have in common. We're going to do greatest common factor factoring. And we've done this a little bit, so you've got to kind of, you know, think about how we want to work this through. What I'm seeing is that this piece has 16 minus 2x, and this piece has 16 minus 2x. I am going to factor that out. So watch what's going to happen. V prime equals 16 minus 2x is common to both. Then get your bracket. To get this first term back, so why don't I change my color. Okay, to get this first term back, I'm going to multiply by 16 minus 2x. So now, don't I have 16 minus 2x squared? Okay, bring along the operation. I'm going to change colors again. And I'm going to say, in order to get this term back, I already have a 2x. Excuse me, I already have a 16 minus 2x. So I need a 2x there. And then I'm going to close my bracket. So I have the colors so that you can see where everything came from. Okay, so let's combine some things. The first factor is beautiful, so I'm going to keep it just the way it is. Okay, so so far I have 16 minus 2x. The second factor is going to be 16 minus 2x minus 2x, which is 16 minus 4x. Okay, set these equal to zero. I'm going to have two possibilities, and let's do this right here. So x um, could equal, so set 16 minus 2x equal to 0. 16 equals 2x, x equals 8. Okay, that's one possibility. The next possibility, 16 minus 4x, 16 equals, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Uh, yeah, I missed up one little thing. I knew I had a number that was not what I wanted, so hold on. If you caught it, well done. So 2x times another 2x is going to be 4x. So I should have had a 4x somewhere. So how did I miss that? Oh, right here. This 2, whoops, sorry. That, this 2 times this 2 should have given me 4x out there. So let me just fix this. Sorry, next time I have to look at my notes when I'm doing this. Okay, that's a 4x. So let's see. That means I need a 4x in the blue. So let me change to my blue. Let me erase this. Make that a 4x. Okay, and then I have 16 minus 6x. Okay, so I hope I didn't really confuse you. But if you go through this with me again, you will get this. Okay, so this is minus 6x. Much better. Okay, set your second factor equal to 0. That's this. And you're going to get x equals 16 over 6, which equals 8 over 3. Okay, which also could equal 2 0.67. Okay, now I have two answers. What do we think about those answers? Well, let's try the 8. Put the 8 in the constraint. What do you see? Width is going to be 16 minus 2 times 8, which is 16, which equals 0. How much of a box do you have left? Not a really big box. So this is the solution if I want to minimize the size which I do not want to do. So your answer that you want is that you want to cut out 2.67 inches. So that means that these x's right here are going to be 2.67 inches if I want to maximize the volume. Now again, I have not done a first or second derivative test. Um, we can certainly do that. I'm going to leave it for you to do, but when I try to plug in my numbers into the constraint, 
I can just reason that I clearly am not getting the maximum volume when my uh, W is a zero. I'm getting no box. So if I took the second derivative, or if you just do this, okay, so why don't we do this? Let's do a first derivative test. Here I have a situation where I have two possible values. One is going to be 2.67. The other one's going to be 8. Okay, so let's pick, um, let's pick, I don't know, let's pick uh, 1 for x. So 16 minus 2 is 14, that's a positive. And 16 minus 6 is also a positive, so this is a positive. Okay, let's pick a number between 2.7 and 8. Let's pick 4. Okay, so 16 minus 8 is positive. 16 minus 24 is negative. A positive times a negative gives me a negative. Then let's pick 10. Okay, 16 minus 20 is negative. 16 minus 60 is negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So therefore my first derivative sign chart looks like this and what I'm seeing is that I can maximize my volume if I use 2.67 for my x and I can minimize my volume if I use 8. Okay so you are um, asked to find the dimensions uh, well I'm going to ask you to find the dimensions the problem just says find the x so what I found my x that maximizes to be, that's going to be 2.67 inches. If I take that x and plug it into my, um, my constraint, I can find my w. So my w ends up being 10.66 inches. And then um, I also figured out the volume by using the objective function in two variables and the volume was 303.98 inches and that's a cubed. Okay? All right, so these are two big problems. You may want to take a little time to go back through this, see if you can do these notes by yourself and get these answers. It's a very good exercise. It won't take you long because you have my work to go along with. But this is important. And you should now try to do the 2.6 day 2 homework that I have attached um, to our assignment.